You might recall, last lesson we had a look at a particular kind of number. It started with an S. Does anyone remember what it was called? Yes, go ahead. Third, very good. In fact, can I just get you guys to, underneath here, make me a little subheading, right? Thirds. Now, this is a new kind of number. A new kind of number. They're a bit weird because you can't count to a third. You could count one, two, three, four, five. You could keep on counting forever and you'd never get to a third because thirds come about through something different. Uh, can someone give me an example, any example you like, of a third? Go ahead, mate. Uh, three. Three. Okay, now, I'm going to take this number. It's not quite a third yet, but there's something we can all do to it that will turn it into a third. What could I do to this number, which at the moment is not yet a third, to make it a third? Yeah, what do you reckon? Oh yeah, so if this sign is the one you're thinking of, right, this sign here, it seems to be attached so often to thirds, um, you might think of it in your brain as a, um, as a third sign. I'm going to fine tune that a teeny bit. This particular one is a square root sign, a square root sign. This guy here, square root sign. Now. We know about square roots because we know about squares. You gotta be careful with those, right? Because putting this square root sign over the top of a number, it doesn't automatically turn it into a third. I'll give you an example. How about this guy here? We know that that is not a third. It's just a regular old counting number. Are you okay with that so far? Yeah. Um, is this guy a third? I, I put that thing over the top. Why isn't this a third? Because you're right, it's not. Uh, yeah, what do you reckon? Um, because if the square root of 25 equals 5. Very good. The square root of 25 is just regular old 5. This is not a third. Okay? So, you've got to watch out. Uh, this square root sign, just slapping it over the top of something, doesn't automatically make it a third. We mean these guys, right? I don't know what this is, but it's equal to about 1.7 something or other. Okay, you can get your calculator out, find the exact value out, but I'm not worried about that right now. My point is, it's got some weird stuff over here, unlike this, which is totally nice and well behaved. Okay? Now, why do we care about these? Why do we bother introducing this weird kind of number? We've been operating just fine without them. And the answer is because of this. I hope you've made this heading by now. And the date today is, is it the fourth? It's the fourth. Always handy to uh, put your date on your work. It's because of this theorem, this idea, this, um, this pattern that we observe in shapes that kind of leads us to these guys. Thirds are important because they come out of Pythagoras' theorem. Thirds are important because they come out of Pythagoras' theorem. Now, they're actually important for lots of other reasons too, but this is the reason we start with them, and it's the reason you met them just last week before we had this lesson. Okay? So, this is where we came from. This is why we went there, because we're going to go and have a look at this. Now, to experience this theorem, which some of you may have met before, um, that's why you have that piece of cardboard in front of you. Now, I have a few extra pairs of scissors. Um, if you've got one between two, that probably should do, but is there anyone who doesn't have a pair of scissors on their table, at least? I'm gonna give you another one, that's okay. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm gonna throw one over here, it's just because I said don't see one, that's okay. You've got one already, fantastic. All right, now, what I want you to do is, you're gonna be cutting out some shapes with me, and, um, in order to cut out, you need to know what you're cutting out, right? So here's where we're going to begin. A right angled triangle. Any right angled triangle. Now before you draw it, before you draw it, just take note of something. If I put your pen down, just so you can um, take this uh, idea into your head with me, okay? We're gonna draw a whole bunch of right angled triangles today, okay? Importantly, I want you to make sure yours is different to the person sitting next to you, even to the person behind you. I don't want you to draw the same one, okay? So I want you to be a bit different here. That's the first thing. The second thing is it kind of needs to fit on your page, and we also need to draw some things around this. Now, really quickly, I'm gonna show you eventually what we're gonna draw, just so you can cut this out correctly, and I've done this before, and then people say, I drew my triangle too big, and I can't fit the rest of it. Here's what we're going to do. 
you're going to draw a right angled triangle. It won't look like this one, because remember, you want to make one different to everyone else's. And then you're going to draw some extra bits on the side, like this. These are going to be squares. I'm going to walk you through all of this in a second. But can you see, I want to fit this whole thing on your page. Yeah? So what you don't want to do, what you don't want to do, is draw a triangle and make it like this big. And like it fits on your page, but then the rest of the stuff will not fit on the page. Does this make sense? Okay, so here's what I want you to do now. Go ahead, use your ruler and a pencil, draw yourself a right angled triangle, make sure it's different to the person's next to you, and also make sure the whole thing, when we're done, make sure it all fits on the page. So don't make it too enormous, okay? But you do have a whole A4 page, so I hope you make it a reasonable size. Go ahead and draw that. 